Yeah. Uh, happy Wine Wednesday. <laughs> happy, happy Wednesday. Here you go. It's Carl's Wine Club. Wednesday Wine Happy Hour. It is right now, 5 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Mountain. Everyone, 8 o'clock in the Eastern Time Zone. So welcome to another one of our outstanding, so much fun, happy hour Wednesday. So much to talk about again this week. Um, so much to review, some great things just happening, some maybe some more scary things are happening at the moment. Uh, speaking about the, the fire, the forest fire in the region. But uh, yeah, welcome everyone. What is in your glass this week? What, is, what are you drinking? What are you tasting? Or which wine have you tasted last weekend that you would like to talk to us about? Leave us a note because we have some pretty cool swag today. We have some peach and chipotle uh, barbecue sauce. We have some Syrah salt. So we have some uh, pretty good fun giveaway. For all of you who leave us who leave us a uh, comment on the chat box, or anyone who have buy who have bought the corselet pack, so here we are, Mira Boucher. How are you doing today? Doing great. Yeah. So, uh, what are we tasting a little later? What what it is in your glass, Mira Boucher? In my what glass. Is in my glass here, we are tasting. <laughs> The very outstanding, never reviewed before, never scored before from Carl's Wine Club, the Talis 2019. And funny enough, Mira. Or 2019, sorry. <laughs> okay. 2018 or 2019? 2018. Did I say 19? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, no, no, no. 2018, that's funny because I had in my mind what I was going to say because you've tasted 19 in tank before you ever tasted the 18. So that's, that's which true. Was, yeah, exactly. So yeah, well, we're tasting, well, go ahead. I tasted it right as we were starting. It's freaking good. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. <laughs> it is pretty darn freaking good. Darn right it is. And I can tell you one thing right now, that wine goes right probably in my wine of the year list. This is so much my style of wine. Oh my God, I have to dissect a little bit more just to see if it's just not, not my style of wine. But I, oh wow, I love that. I really, really love that. Uh, so yeah, we're so talking. I, I have you on the record, actually. I was looking at some of the videos we took the first time we tasted there or one or two months ago. And that's exactly what you said. You taste it. You're like, whoa, wine of the year candidate. And I have that on record. So what? Fun. Oh yeah, I found it when I was looking at the videos. Because I've got some other videos here, like of when we went on the, we went on a quad, you guys. We went to this winery and we went on a quad up to the top of a mountain. And the winery owner and winemaker, Charlie Basler, he's going to join us in a little bit. He was like, oh, you know, we just have to be careful because sometimes this thing can flip or sometimes there's bears or cougars up there. So we got to, you know, keep an eye out. <laughs> Well, the funny part is, but it's when you ask him, you say, "Hey, Charlie, have you ever flipped that thing over?" Oh, you say, "Well, actually, just happened a couple times before." <laughs> and here we go. We have the three kids in the back, and we're climbing up that mountain. And yeah, no, that is pretty cool. That was awesome. Ah, uh, here you go, huh? I'm uh, the the. Uh, the chat box is filling up right away in early stage. I love it. I love it. It's going to be a busy one. I feel like, you know, people are like, like it was quiet in our last couple uh, Wednesdays because, you know, like things are just reopening and people are going out a lot. But I feel like if, if people are sticking with us, Mira. People are crazy. Yay, really, guys. We clearly enjoy what we're doing. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. And Vicky's just saying not to change the subject, but she got her Pearl Morissette wines, it sounds like. We got ours. We're so excited. And uh, she said that she ordered an extra Riesling uh, and from them that wasn't kind of on the list. But insider secret, if you ever see something in a winery that's not on the 
weekly feature that we're doing, we can always add it on if it's on our website. And sometimes even if it's not. <laughs> um, so Vicki did that. She got a special Riesling they have right now, and she says it's great. So that's amazing. It is. It is. I just had Instagram going absolutely bananas right up top of like up here. Um, great. <laughs> hey, we're go we're getting close to finally a thousand subscribe a thousand followers on Instagram. So if anyone who are listening to us right now, it's like a member of us and like really like what we do. Please do me a freaking favor. I've been busting my balls off on that <laughs> darn Instagram for now what? Mira, please tell everyone all along I've been trying my very super very best. Like 11 months. <laughs> Jesus <Yeah>. Christ. <laughs> I'm not very good at social media. Okay, people, you I I I have to agree because now I'm almost a year in that Instagram thing. And I haven't break the thousand follower yet. So anyway, if you guys are on Instagram or people on Facebook, please come and follow and subscribe and follow us so I can get that darn a thousand one K followers. Okay. <laughs> oh, what a great weekend we had. What a great anniversary we had happy anniversary to you Mira Boucher. happy anniversary carl boucher we oh. actually got to spend it with mike the average wine enthusiast mike is a youtuber <laughs> our kids got so excited when we said we have a youtuber coming for dinner they are <laughs> the youtubers now right that's the career of choice um and so mike was here in town visiting a brother and uh in penticton and he and his wife stopped by and we're like hey it's our anniversary and it's your lucky day because we're cracking a bunch of wines it was lots of fun so yeah that was awesome what did we crack we cracked the white merlot from uh from uh riverstone in so in oliver we cracked um, wait a minute. We cracked Corselet Chardonnay. We cracked uh, Tardiva Late Harvest Viognier, and we cracked 2016 Lakeside Cellars uh, Lakeside Cellar Cabernet Franc, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, Corselet Chardonnay with the halibut was pretty darn freaking good. I have we had a freshly caught Haida Gwaii halibut. Yeah. That they had literally flown in the day before whole and they had just sliced up that morning when we picked it up. So it was super fresh and delicious. So yeah, that was yeah, amazing. It was pretty darn good. So we've done that. That was on Monday. But let's and before that on Monday, we have to do a big shout out to our friends at Lunasense. Uh Cameron Cameron, the general manager at Lunescence, and his staff, again, uh, <clears throat> opened the door to Mike, uh, Mike LaPont, the wine enthusiast, the average wine enthusiast, Jen, his wife, and to us for an outstanding tasting in the afternoon, on Monday afternoon, with a beautiful, gorgeous view from Summerland all the way overlooking the Okanagan Lake. It was absolutely glorious. Uh, we've been really, really, really fortunate to be really well taken care of every time we hit uh, Luna Sun. So I want to say thank you to Cameron if he's listening or anyone from his team. Well done, guys. Uh, it's been awesome. And they're doing some pretty cool stuff there also. If anyone's in the area on Saturday night, they do dim sum, uh, dim sum uh, dinner at Luna Sun at the winery with a well-known chef from Vancouver. So every Saturday, uh, some pretty cool stuff anyway. So, that's yeah, awesome. so that's everyone's saying happy anniversary. Thank you. And I also want to say, uh, Derek was wondering about the fires. We're staying out of them for now, Vicky, too. Um, and that they have fires in northern Ontario, so that it's quite smoky in, on, in Toronto as well. So, hope you guys well, are I'm hearing. I spoke to my dad today, and he was saying that even like in the eastern township in Sherbrooke, it is extremely uh, smoky from the Northern Ontario forest fire uh, and also in, in Maine, 
in in the state of Maine, in northern uh, New York, also there's big forest fires. So uh, back east, it's smoky. <clears throat> obviously, sorry, <clears throat> obviously it is really smoky here as well. But it goes on and off. Some days you wake up, it's super smoky and it smells and it's hard to breathe. Some day you wake up, depending on how the wind the wind goes. So um, yeah, there's that. But obviously, our hearts and our prayers are going uh, to everyone, especially right now. I know that our people in Okanagan Falls uh, fought very hard and, and kept the fire away. And now it feels like um, the Priest Creek, yeah. you know, the, the McLean Creek Road uh, yeah. fire in Okanagan Falls is now something who is not really a concern anymore. But there's a big one right now. It's in Oliver. Uh, yeah. It's right on the Black Sage Road, Oliver. So just right beside Inkimip. All of the wineries are closed right now on the Black Sage Road. It started uh, on Monday, uh, Monday late afternoon, and went on all the all day yesterday and still today. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah. So our prayer goes to all of our partners, friends, people from the industry winery owner and also vineyard owner because i uh, that's like yeah so it's prayer tough. are with you guys totally but uh one of the fun things we're we're gonna do next thursday actually if you guys are in the okanagan next thursday stop by we're gonna have i don't know maybe six members stop by and um <clears throat> we're gonna do a barbecue because we got the vertical of the pearl more set in and uh, right, Carl, we may try all so three. You, so even, even if I said I don't want to crack the vertical of uh, of Pearl Morissette, we've been announcing it live now. So I guess that we are opening the vertical of Pearl Morissette. No, we uh, haven't. Next. I mean, I'm just trying to persuade you, but it sounds like it might have worked. So that's great. Hey, well, <laughs> guess what? Like, uh, yeah, I've not been put in the spot just a little bit, right? No, no, no. I told you live that we were taking no, no. It's all no, good. We what I wanted to say about it. the fires, what I wanted to say about the fires is uh, someone, one of our members, Lorna, uh, she's posting in the group sometimes. Uh, she's going to stop by. Oh, got echo. <clears throat> Did you? Hopefully not. Um, so she's going to stop by with a wine called Smokestack. One winery in the 2018 or 17 fires, they had pretty bad smoke and they did try to hide it or you know do away with those grapes so they actually made a wine they called it smokestack and they tried to draw out the smoke and apparently she says it turned out amazing so we're gonna see what that's like next Thursday. hey mike's there nice to see you virtually after seeing you in real life the other day and thanks for the pie by the way i I've, i'm still eating the leftovers you guys brought that pie that peach pie was spectacular Loved it. <laughs> All right. So are you tasting Talis? I am. This is fucking Talis good. About that. It's this is really freaking good. There's that rustic, grainy tannin, that tobacco chewy that I really, really, really like. There's also some sweet fruit in there. Jesus, Mary, that it's good. Oh, my God. So yeah. I'd have to agree. My first sip, I was like, oh, yes, that's a yes. Oh, that's yes. a and after that, big yes with a capital Y. You know, so far, there was like two absolute rock star in that pack. And these two rock star for me were the Syrah and the Oracle, the Rosé. And, uh, and um, the, the Pinot, the, the regular Pinot is really, really solid as well. The Merlot is solid. The Gavert is really good. The super, the rock stars of the pack before um, that I just had a sip here was the Syrah 18 and the 2020 Oracle. Um, but this is outdoing the, the Syrah. Oh, yeah. Spectacular. Uh, in terms of uh, concentration. Did you see the color of that? Oh, yeah. You can't you see, see through dark it. it is? You and cannot. That's, that's that. the Petit Verdot in there. There's 12%, a very healthy 12% of PV in there. So there's that, that grippy. So, yeah, um, super. Like, the, I gave 93 plus to the Syrah. So I just can tell you right now, 
that it's more than that on the Oracle. So we're talking, it's right in the, it's right up there on the wine of the year uh, lineup right there. So Mike is saying that he's heading out to a time winery for dinner tonight. Uh, so Mike, enjoy. And I'm not sure if they still have the duck confit there, but if we they still that. have the duck confit, go nuts because this is an absolute wonderful dish. Uh, I tried it a couple months ago. Uh, last time we were there and uh, absolutely bang on. And if you go for a white, a glass of white wine, uh, try the white meritage. White meritage for time from times, uh, really, really awesome. I like their Syrah. We cracked the Syrah a couple of weeks ago when we were here. We did that. That's funny because we had a member who came to our house and he brought an older bottle of uh, of Napa Valley syrah the black stallion syrah and uh i didn't want to be a smart ass but i just wanted to pour to pop a uh, a canadian syrah just beside side by side and it was pretty interesting to see uh, how a time syrah absolutely shine just beside the 125 dollar bag vintage syrah from california so boom, it was there you go. so true it was like what a hundred dollar wine from California and it was heavier and it just didn't have that that same kind of exciting palette and variation and complexities on the time one it's crazy absolutely hey my mom just joined hi mom uh, bon bonjour ma maman you're right you give me a few minutes here i'm just going to do a little hi to everyone in french i feel like if i don't go back in french enough lately uh, and to be honest, I completely forgot every single time. And, and uh, funny <laughs> enough, Jean Denis, or one of our very active members in Quebec, always poke me on Messenger after, hey, great French today. And when he was like just joking that I haven't said a word in French. So, uh, bonjour à tout le monde au Québec. Uh, bonjour à tout le monde en français. Uh, de la belle région de Québec, la région de Victoriaville. Uh, bonjour à ma mère, maman qui est en ligne présentement. Bon bonjour. Mouah! On est secure. Il y a, les feux sont loin de chez nous. Euh, il n'y a pas de danger. Tes petits-enfants ne sont, en, sont pas en danger. Euh, C'est un petit peu, un petit peu euh, euh, de, beaucoup de fumée dans les airs aujourd'hui, mais quand même, ça, ça, tout, quand même, tout est assez bien. Euh, bon bonjour à nos gens de la ville de Québec. Jean-Denis puis sa gang. Euh, la région de Sherbrooke, la région de l'Estrie, la région des vins du Québec, euh, les, les, nos membres du Nouveau-Brunswick, euh, aussi ceux du nord de l'Ontario, du Manitoba, tout le monde au Canada en français, on vous souhaite un beau bonjour. Si vous avez des questions euh, concernant, oh, like, dépendamment là, pas de, 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 de n'importe quel vignoble au Canada, Bon, ben faites, soyez très à l'aise, envoyez-moi des questions en français également. Si vous venez de, de si vous venez en voyage dans l'Ouest canadien, vous vous sentez plus confortable de passer par moi ou quoi que ce soit, bon, ben ça me fait plaisir de vous aider, mais je voulais dire un beau bonjour, un beau bonjour à Pierre Nolet et sa gang aussi à Québec. Euh, Aujourd'hui, on parle de corselettes. Corselette Estate Winery sont situés dans la vallée de la Simile Camine. Donc, c'est une, c'est pas la même vallée que l'Okanagan. C'est euh, à l'ouest. Quand, quand tu descends, quand tu es entre, euh, entre Caledon, passer Penticton, puis avant d'arriver à Oliver, il y a la fourche pour t'en aller à Kamloops, puis Vancouver. Tu t'en vas par là, une demi-heure au nord, euh, à l'ouest. Puis c'est là la vallée de la Simile Camine, un terroir qui est beaucoup plus. Ben, c'est déjà très sec, très chaud dans ce coin-là, mais c'est plus rocheux. C'est dans un creux de vallée. C'est très, très sec. C'est très, très, euh, il y a très venteux. Donc, les conditions sont super euh, austères. Ça fait des vins austères également, euh, mais des vins absolument splendides. Donc, euh, Corselette, cette semaine, sont en feature. Je suis en train de goûter le Talus, qui est leur flagship wine. Et puis, c'est un, un agencement de Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon et Petit Verdot. Donc, euh, c'est ça. Je voulais dire un beau bonjour en français. Ne vous gênez pas de m'envoyer des questions, quoi que ce soit en français ou en anglais. Ça fait plaisir de parler les deux langages. Donc, here you go. Did you, uh, did you call up a little bit of what I said? Outside of the kiss to my mom? 
<laughs> yeah, I can understand you. <laughs> I can. So what's going on on the uh, on the tick on the uh, comment uh, comment sheet? Well, Jessica is saying something interesting about the smoke. I had a few wines uh, that had noticeable smoke undertones from previous forest fires, but I always enjoy them. Truly enhances the feeling of where they're from and terroir, I feel. And it's interesting because the Syrah, actually, the 2018, I think, that you, we've got in the pack. Yeah. You love that wine. You gave it 93 points. And after you were raving about it, uh, Charlie, the winemaker, said, well, I'll let you in on a little secret. It, it um, That year, <clears throat> usually their Syrahs are much bigger and bolder. But that year, because they had some smoke in the area, they were a little worried about that. So they didn't let it sit on the skins as long in case there was some kind of smokiness to it. So it, it came out more medium bodied than they're used to uh, because of that, but it worked out really well. And uh, I don't get smoke taste on it. You, I, you might get a teeny bit of like, um, a little bit meat, meatiness. Yeah, like a little more meaty. A little bit like more hickory then smoke, maybe a little bit of a barbecue cooking kind of smoke, but not the ashtray. Uh, but just to answer to Jessica, it's a little bit, it depends when the fire happened in the region where uh, where it's happening. Because if it happened before Verizon, it doesn't have an impact on the grape itself. The Verizon is when the grape turned from green to blue, but to to black so the change of color when this happened in mid-august uh in august that's where if there's fire after verizon or during verizon that's when you get tainted smoke uh wine but prior to that it's it's not happening um not on the grape what can happen though it's if there's a lot of ashes up in the air who come down to the vineyard and now that's a total different uh ecosystem where it's changing but in terms of, of smoke in the air affecting the grape it has to be happening during verizon or after verizon so that's why that's how you get tainted grape and tainted wine um so that's part of it also what for for me right now one of the uh, of the worry that I would have, it's the connect, it's the contact with the sun ray. Now it's been cloudy, it's been smoky in the air for a while now. So the sun, the sun ray doesn't hit the vineyard directly like it does in regular time. So the fun, the photos, the photosynthesis happened with the sun ray. So if the sun doesn't hit the grape like usual, maybe the photosynthesis will be. Uh, will be a slow down or will be um, a little bit uh, uh, hold back for a few weeks. So maybe the, the uh, how can I say that just without uh, chewing my words here, Jesus, Mary, uh, we've just been uh, delayed. There you go. We've just been delayed for a few, for a few weeks. So it can happen at the end of the season that, the growing season will be a little shorter because there was so much smoke in the air and the sun ray didn't hit the vineyard as 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 it should be. So yeah, that's a little bit of my worry right now. There's a uh, your uh, like, uh, like well, I was just saying, just like Jessica says, it's part of the terroir and it's part of the whole place and time that it came from, and uh, and um, <clears throat> so it, it might influence how they do things this year, but so does everything else. Like, if we had a really rainy year, if we had a you know, a really hot, well, we had a really hot year, but... oh, what was that? I think Mira's watching a hockey game. <laughs> at the same time or whatever it is so <laughs> that was pretty funny anyhow um yeah there's that but there's also it's interesting what i want to ask jesse uh what i want to ask charlie when he's here in like 10 minutes i want to ask him what's the, the heat what the heat and the heat wave how did it affect his own vineyard um 
like three weeks ago when we got from 45, 49 degrees and all of that stuff. So what's the effect on the vineyard? And also I can't wait for him to explain everyone how different the milk mean is from the old noggin. Because on its own, the milk mean, and Mira, you've been there, you saw it from your own eyes. And from people who live in, the, in Western Canada, they know about the similcamine. They've been there, most of them, and they understand how different it is. But for people in from back east, from that from the Toronto region, or for Quebec, from Quebec, or anywhere else, it's not always clear cut how far apart the similcamine can be from the Okanagan. It's 35 minutes from the Okanagan, so it's not like if it was so clear cut a different. But it is very different when you get in there, right? Yes. And so if you don't mind, I will, I'll share this. So this is what was the weird noise before. It just kind of started playing. Oh, that was your home run during a baseball game. I thought you were watching the Red Sox. No, but you guys, like, we just want to take you there. What we experienced like a month ago, it was crazy. We didn't know what to expect. We got to Corselets just expecting kind of we'll do a regular old tasting. And then just uh, um, Charlie, who you'll meet in a few minutes when he stops by, He's like, hey, you want to see my new project? And this is what he showed us. I came out, got a farmer here on Saturday night. I, was, I graduated, I was looking for work. I was going to work in northern Alberta, reclaimed mine sites. Uh, I was all part of recreation. I was part of my, my passion. And, uh, wow. <laughs> I come up with like, I like this. So guys, wow. when you're out here, just watch because there's cactus all over, okay? So just, there's cacti cactus everywhere. Cactus everywhere. There's like prickly pear cactus. That's why we have these pliers up here. Let's take a look <laughs> and then I'm going to show you our new vineyard. Oh yeah. my god. Is this a desert or what? Yeah, it's a desert. There's cacti. The only desert in Florida. Yep. We're at the desert. No, we're at Corselets. That's the new Pinot Noir vineyard. We call this K wow. Vista. K Vista. For obvious reasons. The Vista. Well, look at the Vista. Pinot Noir up there. Wow. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. We we uh we've been kind of working on this project for about three years. So I've had that weather station up there now for three years, and we've been kind of monitoring climate to see what is the appeal and what is the interest. Can I climb it? Digging. Yeah, you run up there, man. Just get the, everything on the dirt's good, but every, if you're off in the desert, that's where you're gonna find the cactus, okay? Oh yeah, yeah I see the cacti. So um, anyway, yeah, we've been kind of working at this uh, mentally on, on a planning level for some time, and uh, we pulled the trigger this year. The uh, company out of Penticton came and did all this shaping and, and kind of grading for us. And so the rest of my summer involves just getting water up here, getting it fenced, getting some of the underground and, and uh, surveying accomplished, and then we'll plant in the spring of 2022. How did you decide to come to uh, the, That's the water station? Yeah, no. it's, so it's, uh, it's park climate, so it's not dramatically cooler up here, but the season is a little bit shorter. So um, I would say that, you know, typically the rule of thumb is for every 100 meters you go up, you lose 100 GDDs. That's a very simplified rule to elevation and climate. Mm -hmm. However, here, as because we're straight, all of these orchard vineyard rows run north-south. So as you actually go up on the south-facing slope, your sky actually grows. So you get the sun earlier, you get it later. Okay, yeah. You know, our, our winters are actually a little bit warmer up here than they are below. Interesting. So there's all these different elements that kind of change the climate or have broken the rules up here. And so, but. Um, but there's no question that wildlife is a challenge up here in terms of bear and deer uh, and uh, just access. You know, you guys saw us come up, you know, and get <laughs> caught in one of these kind of two, three inches of snowfall mid-October and be hauling Cap Franc down, for example. Yeah. So so part of it is like, okay, let's, let's get something, let's get it. Okay. <clears throat> I love, I just love that. I just love when Gabby and Cedric just bolt and just start running all the way on top of the hill. I'm like, oh, here I you know, go. That was, that was the next part. They were coming back down and they were like, oh. 
So I stopped it before we got to that part. We call us bad parents. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Stephanie's saying it's quite different from the Quebec vineyards, and that's something we can't wait to experience. I mean, we haven't seen the Quebec, Quebec vineyards in person yet. <laughs> Thanks, Linda says the boys are awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, they had an absolute blast. They're still asking about the quad ride. Can we go back at the top where the bear lives? And like, oh, <laughs> we'll have to do like a, a cheat sheet of wine country and on the Okanagan according to our kids because basically whenever we mention a winery they'll say oh is that the one with the big Saint Bernard or is that the one with the quad or yeah. is that the one with the trampoline <laughs> like they remember yeah. the wineries by you know is that the one with the pool oh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so awesome hey. well guess what hey. we, have, we have someone special here Yes, we do. Yes, we do. A special guest just arrived. So, uh, just uh, Charlie's sitting in the in the green room. There you go. He's in. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Good, Carl. Nice hat. I love hey, it. Look, I, I got my here. here, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, how are you today? Doing yeah. great. I don't know how I got renamed Corselettes, but I'll fix that. <laughs> yes. yes, I'm sipping on your the Talus, the 2018, and it's spectacular. Wonderful. Like Wonderful. seriously spectacular. We're I loving just, it. Uh, I just came in uh, from an aggressive site tour, looking at all our vines, kind of coming in together as we leap into another plant stage here at the, at the Estate Vineyards. And so, you know, already now we're – having a pretty good look at what Talus is going to look like, you know, in terms of a vineyard and row selection. So it's an exciting time to talk to you guys about 18. And, and, you know, of course, we're always thinking about uh, the 19, which is unreleased and, and uh, 21s. I mean, all the, all these things, the evolution of blended wines like this through vineyards is such an important part of uh, what I do. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun to share with you. Hey, cheers to you, Charlie, and uh, thanks for taking the time, because I know you're very busy. You're up at 5 a.m., you do your vineyard stuff, run back in the house to help with the twin girls, go back out, out there, make sure everyone is ready at the tasting room, get on the quad, get on the tractor. So this is a busy, busy, busy schedule on Charlie's, uh, Charlie's live, so thanks for being here. We greatly appreciate that. You bet. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here, guys. Thanks for putting this on. Okay, so what I'm having, because there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. First and foremost, it's can you reassure people, because now it's all over the news, it's all over the country, we know what's happening in Oliver. So do you, are you guys in the Simil Kameen, can you please put in perspective how different and how where the Simil Kameen is compared to the south of the Okanagan? Because it's not the exact same wine region. So sure. where are you guys at? Well, I'd, I'd love to uh, physically take my desktop computer and show you out the window. But, you know, we're uh, it's always great to be in the Simil Kameen, um, you know, and, uh, and certainly the, the situation is so used to Oliver, OK Falls really challenging for, for tourism, uh, you know, wine growers, uh, for sure. These are all kind of challenging times. Um, yeah, we feel really fortunate here in the Simil Kameen. We are a separate valley that parallels the Okanagan, um, just a, a, a mountainside over towards the west. And so, uh, you know, our, our season here has uh, so far been very exciting in terms of, you know, the dramatic heats that we've all had and everyone's heard of the heat dome and, um, we've got very good, strong, mature vineyards here. We've got a really unique soil structure that, uh, allows our vines to grow with a lot of, in, in, you know, durability, if you will, to kind of weather some of these difficult, um, uh, temperature swings that we've had. So we're really fortunate for that in, in the immediate issue of, of forest fires and, and, uh, you know, our predominant winds, the world spins. We're not going to stop the world spinning one direction Our prevailing winds are from the West towards the East. And so, you know, again, our, our exposure has been um, has been very minimal. We had a little bit of a southerly or from the south wind come in and have a little bit of uh, smoke from the Washington fire recently. But all in all, it's a it's a great run for us here. We're really excited to uh, feel really lucky, really fortunate compared to what some of our neighbors are dealing with. So, um, so separate part to your to a question, uh, Carl, is, you know, the, the smoke mean is its own appellation. 
and Appalachians are defined by watersheds, generally speaking, a few different ways people get into sub Appalachians, of course, is a whole other conversation, but Appalachians, um, generally speaking, whether you think of the Rhone or the Loire, all these regions are defined by a greater watershed. And then amongst that watershed, they'll, they'll chop it up into sub Appalachians based on particular profiles, characteristics, terroir, uh, and that includes uh, culture. So, um, you know, that's uh, kind of synopsis of the Samokamy. It's a very exciting region. We are right close to the Washington border here. So in terms of, uh, you know, solar radiation or growing capacities, it's uh, it's as hot and as exciting as our Canadian great climate gets. So it's just a, it's a great place and there's no better time to come visit. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, you know, and in terms of texture of the wine, I can see some difference because while well, your region is way more windy than it can be in the Okanagan, it's a little bit more rugged. It's funny because when we went there, we, we kind of did the whole valley a couple of times back and forth. And you feel like you go back in the far west in the sense that it's it the weather feel dry, the weather feel rugged, everything. And when you taste the wine, the, the, the wines are spicy, the wines are the dusty tannin, the structure are a little bit uh, a little bit more harsh in the sense that the wines are a little bit more, I would say, uh, aggressive in, in, in his own sense. So there's a very typical uh, texture and in, in line into the wine from the Simil Camin, and you reflect that so well in the spicy finish, in a very, very long finish into your wine. Um, so it is really, because your background, you were with Burring Owl in the past, you work also in the Okanagan. What's the biggest difference between the grape from the south of the Okanagan and the grape from the Simil Camin? Sure. Well, uh, there's probably two really important components. And the, the first one is soil. Um, you know, we have a, a very similar soil structure being off of Fairview Mountain here than the very infamous Golden Mile, uh, you know, and these soils that are referred to as stem winder, which is this really broken, really rugged, broken angular stone structure that comes from these volcanic columns. And so, you know, time and, and the impacts of gravity have eroded this really young soil, geologically speaking, um, you know, to, in the high banks of the valley. And so soil is the, the, the a big one for sure. The other really important impact is this diurnal temperature effect. And so diurnal being, you know, the, the, the evening lows to daytime highs, what the Smoky Valley doesn't have is a lake. And so, you know, when we think of lakes, we think of these really massive bodies of energy. And so what lakes do is moderate temperature. And so, you know, that can be great if you're, you know, prolonging the season. Uh, you know, there's many reasons why that would be a very positive uh, impact. In grape growing, we think about structure. We think about two things. We think about tannin and, uh, you know, minerality. Uh, and the third one would be acidity, you know, certainly brings a lot of structure to wines. And so this diurnal impact that we get, these extreme lows, I'll call them, and they're not that extreme, but, um, you know, we, we do get uh, a couple degrees cooler evenings, and then we get a couple degrees warmer days because we don't have this lake that buffers those temperature swings. And so that natural fresh acidity is so important in winemaking. And, uh, you know, all of, we're really proud to say that our acids are natural, and that's not always the case when we think of the global industry of, of uh, wine production. And, uh, and there's no better acid than natural acid. And so it's such an important part in creating longevity, ageable wines that are fresh and it complements this mineral character we get from that really slaty and dusty tannin of, of our terroir. So uh, those are big kind of, you know, banners that we like to, to, to preach about when we think of Similkameen terroir or Similkameen wines. Uh, this is, there's something because I, that's my, that was my favorite part of when I tasted four of your wine side by side a couple of weeks ago. And to me, that's what came out of it. The finish, the finish is long and so complex and the spiciness. And you can feel like the whole, like the whole vision of your portfolio has the same kind of reference in the back on the back palette. So yeah, I, I, I fell in love and we had the, like many comments here from our people like uh, like Sandra, Sandra Bjorklund said the first time she went to the Smilk, I mean, they went to visit. Your girls were pretty, were young. They signed up for your club right away. And <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. And I, I want to tell Sandra, Very it's neat. pretty funny because the first time we got to the winery, Mira and I, we own a wine club. We've never been part of any wine club. And when we left Charlie's place, we signed up to their wine club. So now Carl and Mira, owner of Carl's Wine Club, <laughs> we're part of one other wine club and it's Corsolet Wine Club. So, you know, <laughs> That is such a wonderful accolade, Carl, when you said that. I just, I was so happy, you know, after a little tour. And maybe it was the ATV tour. Maybe that really hooked you up. But there was something really special about your visit here. And I'm so, so happy and, and so honored that we're your first club. So that's <laughs> awesome. Hey, guess what? Now that experience, maybe there's a little bit of the Talus 19 in tank who maybe will hook me up a little bit more on the signature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's and it's not every day when you go into the cellar, you taste the flagship in tank and you see some Romani Conti hanging on the wall and you have the chance to talk about old Burgundy. So no, the whole, for the whole experience, that's why. Hey, well, Charlie, I want to talk about the Talus because that's what's in my glass right now. Uh, it's a wonderful blend of Merlot, Cap Franc, Cap Soft, Petit Verdot, and a splash of Malbec. But something jumping out all of the glass to me, and it's the healthy 12% of Petit Verdot that I definitely that I can see in the color. Mm -hmm. The wine is really deep, it's really dark, and there's also a bright, meaty acidity in that wine that I suspect that comes from that healthy part of the Petit Verdot. Do you go back and forth every year depending on what Mother Nature gives you or you pretty much have a recipe for your talus? How do you operate, how, how do you operate that on a year in year out basis? Well, there's never a recipe, Carl. I think um, as soon as you kind of put yourself down the, the road of a recipe, you kind of, um, I, I just, I don't even really like to think about it. <laughs> that's a, so that's definitely not the case. We, we trial everything repeatedly over and over again with the, the highest level of criticism. And it all starts in barrel selection. Well, first site selection, row selection, ferment strategy, uh, you know, and then we kind of follow this evolution down into what is a, a rough blend, and then we'll we'll analyze that. We do find, no matter what, though, that Merlot and Cabernet Franc take take dominance of the blend, and year over year, um, the varietals that we just grow so well here in the Snow Queen. Um, so, so I'd say not that it's a recipe, but we have a good feeling every year that Merlot and Cap Franc are going to drive this thing. Cabernet Sauvignon you know, always brings a little bit of a savory character that we so much welcome. And, and this kind of, um, I'll say this rugged uh, reality to our smoke mean um, growing region, the Malbec and PV, the, those are really always the wild cards. So, you know, they, they on a vintage characteristic, those will change the wine a lot. So in 2018, we were a little bit more forward on Petit Verdot because we were looking to you know, you're, you're correct in saying that the Petit Verdot always has a little bit of a higher acidity character. Not that it tastes acidic, but it just, it brings structure to wine in a big way. Um, in 2018, we were really happy to have secured the small concentrated berry size in Petit Verdot. Uh, and unfortunately, Malbec, that vintage just had a really large, you know, you get a few odd rains and away you go. Uh, Malbec just had a very explosive berry size. And so, you know, when we think about concentration and, and uh, you know, the giving Talos their very best, Petit Verdot did uh, take dominance there. Um, but it is, it, it does come down to so many things, Carl. You, you know, I, um, in a million words or less, someone asked me a similar question. Well, hey, how do, how do you make Talos? And I said, well, it's actually really simple. And they kind of were like, whoa, well, I, I didn't expect that. Um, but, you know, it's really simple in a sense that you take your very best from every element of, this, of the growing season through the winemaking cellaring. Uh, then you, you know, you're uber critical with your best barrels and then only half of those typically make the cut. So after all of this really critical analysis, the final blend needs to be complementing to itself and it needs to come together. So. It's never uh, just, oh, well, let's find all of our best barrels and put them in the tank and, and call it uh, our flagship. That's not how it works. Um, you know, doing that often would lose structure. You would lose elegance and, and you it, things don't always work the way you think. And so it's, uh, 
yeah, we're, we're in the lab with the beakers. We taste this over and over again. We tweak it here. We tweak it there uh, in the pursuit of making something that represents um, our region, ourselves as, uh, you know, as business people and as wine people. And it just, uh, it's been, it's an exciting journey. So it's a lot of fun to do. But it Charlie, I, have to put fun name, I have to put my name forward for the next barrel tasting panel. Because if you ever had an empty seat there, you know that I'm just an hour and 10 minutes away, right? And uh, I would be more than happy to sit down with you and uh, do these uh, little barrel selection. <laughs> you bet, like, Carl. You bet. Oh, man. That, no, that's, that's, your, a that's a big part of it. Absolutely. So uh, <laughs> while we're live, while I have you here, I would like to give you a little bit of my uh, first instance analysis of what I have because I haven't tried it yet before I, I decanted the wine an hour and a half ago um, an hour before the show it's been sitting in my glass and well first and foremost the the color is very dark deep color the nose has a lot of cassis that's tensile lead a little bit of graphite I love the flinty minerality who comes out of that and there's pipe tobacco so briefly, that's what I'm getting on the nose. On the palate, there's a lot of black currant, some a lot of dark fruit, but there's also that sweet, uh, that sweet fruit, like that cherry, that dark cherry, uh, maybe a little bit of confit plum. In the middle palate, I got a lot of dark chocolate, some cedar. There's a little hint of old world in there that I can feel, like comes from the graphite and the minerality. And I love the spicy, the, the spiciness in the back end. There's some dark chocolate, dark cocoa as well. Um, so long, complex, spicy. I really love right now. I'm a suck. I like my I like my tannin not too round. I like when they're snappy a little bit, and that gives me that right now. It's uh, obviously it's, it's a young it's a young buck this wine will age gracefully for at least 10 years to my opinion but i like my wine in their youth i like when they're really expressive and right now it gives me everything that i i'm looking for for a young wine i got everything here so to me in my book it's at least a 94 point and i was with black hills last week uh the last weekend doing their uh the release from the 2019 uh, Nota Bene, and this is right up there in the same point structure, uh, 94, 95 points. This is an absolute beauty. Well done. I like the length. I really like the complexity as well. It's not a fruit bomb. It's not something that it's uh, over extracted. It's 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 precise as well and i really love the the feel of terroir that it's there i like the dusty tannin so my friend i have to like uh, congrats it's very well very complimentary much appreciate that and uh now i need to uh i really need to i want to talk to you about oh mira mira is here mira don't always have the same vocabulary that i have but our members absolutely love her explanation because she reached out and she said, this bottle, it's a four glass out of five. And like the way she, she rates the wine is very unique and people like to connect with her. So Mira, what, how do you rate Talus? Well, the first thing for me is, do I like it or not? And so the first thing I did was I, you know, I tasted it. I'm like, oh yes, this is a yes. This is an absolute yes. And then it's, well, how many glasses would I want of this? Like if I'm sitting down, having a nice dinner, I'm having friends over, we're chatting, like how many glasses would I want? I'd want at least four. And so if I had friends over, I'd want a few of these bottles around. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. Stephanie Sears saying, man, listening to Carl describe the talus, I suddenly feel thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. But well, yes, it's delicious. Here you'll, you'll, be, you'll be happy to know that just this year we started making some magnums. So, you know, wow. if you have friends over and you're looking for four glasses, then we've got a magnum format for that. So it's. There you go. And we're one club members. So we probably get first dibs at the magnums, right? There you go. You sure do. You sure do. <laughs> 
By the way, I can't wait to go swing a couple, couple, couple walk on top of that little private little area when you can walk a few uh, golf balls. So that's right. That's yeah, they right. Have a place with the the members area where you can hit a golf call, ball into um, kind of the vineyard, right? Yeah, a little downhill, 89 yard downhill par three. It's a pretty tricky approach shot downhill with a green facing away. So it's uh, it takes quite the iron. Um, not to brag, but I've got two hole in ones. And, uh, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, you guys just got back from the. It was the uh, the All Canadian Wine Championship a couple of weeks ago. I think last weekend they released their the result, and um, the rumor is that uh, the rose, the Oracle rose, and the Gewurz Treminer both brought gold home. Is it true rumors? Yeah, they are true rumors. Yeah. So we had uh, just sent the four wines away as our spring releases just kind of correlate with the all canadians so yeah the the spring release for us of course is uh the converged demeanor uh the oracle that you've got shown there uh pino and syrah and so all place medals we're really excited about that the oracle rosé is a really exciting wine for us we've been you know really i don't want to say arm wrestling because uh it's it's a much softer to winemaking, rosé is a very delicate process, and particularly when we use Pinot Noir and Syrah. So this is an 80% Pinot Noir, 20% Syrah. Um, as you can tell, the color is very, very pale, and uh, it's a result of all hand-picked, whole cluster, uh, very inert and gentle process that brings this to the tank where we ferment uh, very nice and cool, preserve a lot of these bright, fresh, wild berry, wildflower aromatics, um, it's it's a stunner, you know. I mean, um, uh, Anthony Gisbani here out of Vancouver has uh, you know said a couple times that this is a few years running now, one of the top three rosés in the province, and you know that bears quite a bit of weight coming from him. We're really excited about that. So we've been you know you know flexing a little bit how we operate this. We've been purchasing a lot of really high end rosés and trying to understand what makes them unique and. And texture is everything, and, and texture is not always an easy, uh, you know, thing to secure in, in a white wine program. So uh, this is the first year, the, the 2020 here, that we brought uh, some neutral punch and barrel ferments to it to again increase the the palate weight and the texture, that creaminess that we always refer to in these really kind of uh, elegant and prestigious Provence inspired rosés. And so uh, we're really excited about that small change. It's only 8% that um, really moved the pendulum of this wine into a much better category. So we're really excited about that. We'll, we'll definitely maybe grow that from 8 to about 15%. Um, but a great patio wine. It's got the depths and complexities to make it, you know, a more serious pairing type wine for seafoods. It's got nice bright freshness and acidity, but all wrapped up in that on lees kind of creamy texture we get from really cool and, and uh, gentle press cycles. So um, I love making rosé. And, and oddly enough, you know, it's one of the more challenging wines that we make. Uh, and, and people are, of course, we're excited that they take to the patio and crush it, and that's fine. But, man, back in the cellar, we give ourselves a lot of anxiety over rosé. So it's uh, hey, a fun know, yeah, there's a few things about the rosé. First and foremost, what you just mentioned, it's great. But the part that I don't get, it's the $20. This is absolutely insane. With that quality of wine, for you to be able to maintain the price point at $20 price point, it is absolutely insane to me. That's the best value wine available across the country for the quality. And second... Uh, we did, I did, and my wife called me absolutely crazy about that because uh, a month ago, it was International Rosé Day, and I wanted to do something a bit unique, so I went live for five and a half, no, six hours that time, and I tasted 26 rosés. The day after, we invited a bunch of people from the industry. It just happened, it was my birthday, my 45th, the, week, the day after. So we had a bunch of people over, and all of the 30 people home, your rosé was in the top three of everybody's ballot. So, yes, you nailed it. The price is outstanding. 
And it's not only for me, not only from BC, but it's price in its in its price category across the country. This is definitely a double goal to us. Like absolutely nailed it. Definitely. Oh, thanks, Carl. And Mira, that's great. Like I said, it's uh we put a lot of work in, in kind of understanding how we want to make it. And and so we are really excited with the way we've deployed this last release. And and you know, some you know, we go to the drawing board every year with a lot of different wines, but but sometimes we have to put, you know, we have to pump the brakes and say, don't fix what's not broken here. Like <laughs> this is pretty damn good. Let's just kind of, let's move slow. So anyway, it's an exciting one. And it's funny Thanks. because this week with the offer, like we always do, we offer the people if they want to custom made their order. And funny enough, we had a member who ordered 24 bottles of the rosé. <laughs> that's right. Back, and back that's you sit up today. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it's been a, it's been such a great week working with you and Jesse. You guys are outstanding. The wines were happy to uh, to, to showcase the, the whole country. What's the Simil Camin is all about? And you guys are the poster child of the Simil Camin in the sense that it's the the wine is the reflection of the terroir. So we thank you for your partnership because it is it's an absolute blast. Well, thanks, Carl. It's been it's been a lot of fun working with you and Mira, and uh, and thank you for the opportunity to, of course, share the good word of the Samilkameen with your your members abroad. So, uh, you know, you've got a, a very vast audience uh, reaching out east, and so it's great for us to take the opportunity to tell people about the Samilkameen and and the wonderful things that are happening here. So, it's, it's a before great place to live. Go, I don't know if Mira has anything for you, but before well, you go ahead, Mira. I'm just wondering if we can do a quick recap of the offer uh, and all the different wines featured, if you wouldn't mind. I have pictures of all of them. I can tell. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. You put me on the spot here. I, I don't have but the... Not just you. I mean, Carl can do it. This oh, is one of Carl's gifts is he's got this crazy gift to, uh, he just remembers things like really well when it comes to wine. First and foremost, let's go with the Gewurz Demeanor, a $19 wine. To me, that punches at least for $25, $26, without a doubt. And the big feature for me, Charlie, as the Gewurz Terminer, and it's bone dry. And the, the, the length, the finish of that wine is absolutely crazy. Gewurz Terminer on its own usually doesn't have a crazy acidity. But like you mentioned, the diurnal temperature of your area make that wine very bright. And a beautiful ginger, spicy finish for a white wine. What's the, uh, is there hundred percent stainless steel there? Do you use any concrete? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 No, uh, Gewurz Schemeiner just doesn't, um, yeah, it, it just complements a much fresher, more tropical style with that really cool all steel, uh, ferment for sure. Yeah. Single vineyard, then, uh, right? Single vineyard. Yeah. So, um, this comes from a beautiful place called Second Chance Vineyards. And for reasons you've described, you know, with this milk mean is very vast in terms of its growing capacities. You know, we grow our, our bigger red or late ripening red varietals or Cabernets, uh, you know, Talus blend style wines up on the high banks where the season is hot and long. Down on the valley bottom, the soil enriches a little bit. It's got just some more organic matter. It's a much more fertile soil by definition. Uh, and, uh, and benefits from even cooler evenings as that cool air kind of floods the valley bottoms. And so it gets a lower start or slower start to morning heats uh, and uh, complemented by even cooler evenings. So for aromatic varietals like Gewurztraminer, uh, Pinot Gris, uh, you know, these are all great sites. And so Second Chance Vineyards, uh, a, a rock star site for this Gewurztraminer. Outstanding. I, I had that with a little, uh, we had some Chinese food from this, this famous place in Peachland here. They said it's the best Chinese in the whole BC, in the whole province. And I believe it because it was outstanding. So we had we had the Chebel, the Oracle. So this is one of the rock star of the vintage. I believe from the 2020, it's one of the top three rosé across the country. So that's the Oracle. And the first one, Mira is just showing here the Syrah. So before we go into the, the Pinots, we're going to talk quickly about the Syrah. Sure. The 2018 Syrah here, if I'm not mistaken, you're using two vineyard sites for your Syrah, correct? Yeah, we, we've got two sites, so they're a kilometer and a half away from each other. Um, the Our state vineyard has uh, about a 40% of this content uh, Syrah. It's clone 
7. And Clone 7 has a larger berry, larger cluster, a little bit more of a vigorous vine in nature, uh, much more of that fruit forward, plummy type. Uh, I won't say Shiraz, but bordering that. We've got another site we call Middle Bench Vineyard, and it's exactly that. It's on Middle Bench. It's this big glacial uh, round river stone band of, of soil, and uh, it drains like drain rock, really. And so, um, and we're, we're really excited. We've got a, uh, all, all of our vines for the Syrah are in that 14 to 17 years of age. So we're getting some really nice, deep root structures, and, and we're able to harness some of the very finest bits of these vineyards. Um, Clone 100 is a smaller cluster. It's much more Rhone inspired. In fact, it is one of the kind of original, uh, you know, clones that kind of uh, that has been bred to uh, to to evolve to much more Shiraz style wines. Clone 100 has got that Rhone look and feel. It's just a little bit of a more delicate, thinner skin Syrah cluster uh, or berry and uh, creates a little bit more of a more refined um, yeah, Rhone style Syrah. And so uh, super delicious, nice, bright white pepper on the nose. Great freshness that is just typical of all of our reds and um, great all around Syrah wine. Syrah does phenomenally well in the smoking. Yeah, absolutely. And that little dryness that I feel like make that length extremely long. And from like that cinnamon all the way to the pepper and the peppery finish just like last and last forever. I give it a 93 plus points. Uh, and for me, what makes the biggest difference, I, I had a lot of these, like I'm a big, big fan of the uh, the Black Sage Road Syrah because of the, the spiciness, uh, the richness, but like pretty much none of them have the same length of what you have out there. So the length of that wine to me is extremely spectacular. So big, big hit for us uh, at Carl's Wine Club. Uh, for the Syrah. When we go to the Pinot program, we had the Pinot Noir and also the Pinot Reserve. Um, nine, the 2019, no, the 2020 for the regular Pinot and the 2019 for the Reserve Pinot. Uh, sorry, Mira, I'm just like bouncing back and forth and it's, I can just picture her. She's like, oh my God, can you please focus on one here? <laughs> so, Charlie, what's the biggest? What's the biggest difference? Obviously, the reserve one uh, is the selection of your best barrel. But do you do you previously in the year select a few rows where you think that it's going to be mostly, or do you have some sites year in and year out that you know exactly that goes into the reserve? How exactly do you manage the whole thing? So we have two uh, one-acre Pinot blocks here on our estate site. Um, the one along the driveway, Carl, if you remember coming in, it's a little bit low lier. It's uh, it's about 50% of it's planted in what's actually called Samilkameen soil. It's kind of a, a sandy loam. Um, and it uh, it's also clone triple seven. I and mean, people above and beyond any other wine love to discover and discuss clones in Pinot Noir. And the reason is, because it should almost be separate varietals. Like clones in Pinot, because it's a delicate structured wine, reveals clonal differences like no other wine. And that's why it's so exciting to always think about clones when we drink Pinot. Our um, reserve is always from the same site. It's up high up, closest to that rock cliff, uh, that kind of cliff toe that comes into our vineyard. And it radiates a lot of extreme heat back into the vineyard in the evening. And uh, it's all clone 115, which is almost like um, the, the wine is much more delicate. And so from a reserve characteristic, like, I don't know, it thinks um, it's much more burgundy, that farmyard, barnyard, you know, that when you when you swirl the wine, it's almost a little bit tawny and, and uh, towards a, a rusty uh, character. And it's just, again, so indicative of, of this clone. The, the classic, the 2020, is much more fruit forward, and it's just a response of this clone. Um, triple seven is much more robust, more red berry, dark raspberry. It's just a little bit more punchier, and it just plays really well with more fruit forward classic style. We, we, classic is what something we use internally. It's a little bit more of a Pacific Northwest style in terms of that fruit forward nature. Um, the reserve is aged in a 1,000 liter French oak vat for, for 17, 16, 17 months. Um, the, uh, the 2020 is, uh, you know, about six to seven months as a barrel program for that, because we just find it loses a bit of identity and, 
Uh, we maintain a lot of that fruit forward nature with the with the shorter seller time. It's just a great turnaround, easy drinking, uh, gateway red to uh, to other programs of uh, Corselet Red. So. No, absolutely. Well, let's just get back with the reserve for just a second because uh, when I tasted it, I was trying to. It was a little bit more cerebral type of wine. I'm just sitting down and swirl it and just like digging deep inside of it. And I was like, I had a hard time to put it a score, an immediate score, because I knew more I swirl, more I was tasting. I knew down the road this wine will soften up. This wine will open up in like three to five years. I know that that wine can be an absolute rock star if it's uh, if it's stored properly. So I love to I probably get a couple of extra bottles next time that I'm there, put them in the lower shelf here and make sure that they're not touched for five years. And I really want to revisit that uh, that 19 reserve. I think there's a lot of long term potential there. Absolutely. We, we do, um, you know, we do a lot of whole cluster style because it's a smaller ferment. We do whole cluster ferments with our reserve. And that does two things, Carl, and you've touched on it. Is it's not really supposed to come out of the gate swinging as cheerfully as the 2020. It is a wine that is designed to have a little bit more of an aggressive tannin, and that comes from that rake of stem. Um, you know, but all the great wines of, of, uh, of Burgundy are, are the big houses there are all whole cluster type of wines because Pinot actually benefits a lot from structure from what is rake as tannin. And so, but they do take years to develop. And, and um, you know, is this something that, uh, you know, we encourage people to take home and enjoy right away? Not really. Uh, we have another Pinot for that. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's the beauty yeah. when you have a diversified portfolio. You always have a different op option when you have, you have to put a few bottles down in the cellar. So staying with the Burgundian, uh, Burgundian uh, grapes, let's go to the Chardonnay. I have to tell you that that's the one that we cracked for an anniversary on Monday. I yeah, had a big, big piece of Alibut and we cracked the Chardonnay. Uh, 92 points to me. I like I like the balance between the oak and the fruit. It's not something that you chew on a two by four, but there's also that roundness. There's that uh, little bit of, uh, of of creaminess, but not too much. But I like the purity of the fruit when you get some green apple, a little bit of melon. So uh, I love that. What is the um, what is the? Do you have a specific clone, a mix of clone that you're using? What's the exact uh, the exact strategy here? Well, I, I I wish I knew, Carl. And so, um, you know, we purchased our vineyard here, our estate site, uh, with Chardonnay already planted, and through literature, it just didn't translate into records. And uh, it so so I don't know what clone it is. I really wish I did um, because we'd like to complement that with planting a little bit more. Um, so so that will be a little bit of a mystery for both of us. <laughs> I can't tell you a little bit. You know, we, we, we do about eight barrels of uh, Chardonnay as it's kind of shown on the label and on, on Mira's uh, sub uh, list there. It, it is a micro lot series. And so we do, we dabble because we're so wine curious. We have wine making problems. Uh, and so Chardonnay is part of that. Micro lots for us are things that we really enjoy just discovering and playing with. And, and uh, Brett, my assistant down uh, in the cellar is a, a shard head. He's shard core. If you've ever heard of that definition, he's young and loves Chardonnay. Yeah, you are, so. um, <laughs> I think we just found a new uh, nickname for for Carl. 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 There you go. And don't feel bad that you don't know the clones, because a, I didn't know what the hell a clone was until the start of the pandemic when I discovered what Carl does for a living even though I lived with him for many years. And then uh, B, we've met so many other wineries where they say, yeah, we have no idea what the clones are. <laughs> and it doesn't ultimately affect the wines. They still make phenomenal wines. They, you know. Uh, well, a little bit of mystery is nice too, even for us, right? right? <laughs> ultimately, you're listening to your vines and you already know them. So who yeah. cares what the clone is? Yes, and again, Charlie, exciting. again, that's a true reflection of your estate terroir. Like it's right. I think the the uh, the that Chardonnay here is right next to the property between your house and your parents' house. Where exactly the uh, the Chardonnay vineyard is? Yeah, it's right next to our Pinot Block. So right uh, by that par three 
uh, Gulf Green is where the shard comes from. And uh, yeah, there's uh, three rows there that, uh, you know, it's about, uh, geez, we, in 2020, we would have pulled a bit of Chardonnay from our neighbor as well, which is about a half a kilometer down the road to complement what was our eight barrel program. And, uh, and so again, it's, you know, he doesn't know what his cone is either. So it's, <laughs> I love we're it. all flying blind on Chardonnay. <laughs> I love it. Hey, let's finish it up with, uh, with quickly with the Cap Franc and the Merlot. So sure. this is two of the king varietal of, of the Simil Camin Merlot grows so well there is nice richness and a little bit of smoke natural smokiness there is a little bit of a of that dusty tannin but round and soft so is it the most planted grape on your property yeah merlot is a, a big part an important part of our program i mean there's two reasons carl so it yes it does so well that's number one i mean we we we've listened we've tasted and we've responded to our, our vineyards. And so uh, being a, a Merlot dominant seller is definitely the obvious choice. Um, we have uh, three different clones of Merlot, a uh, couple different air vines here. We've got some new vines coming online this year. We're really excited about that Sunshot vineyard that I'm sure I pointed out on our tour. Uh, but this here, the, the, the wine being offered is uh, all made from our old vine, own rooted um, uh, vineyards. And so what's really interesting is, Carl and, I, and Mira, I've, we touched on this a little bit through your visit. Uh, you know, it's very typical, or I'll, I'll say normal, that the Canadian industry has been kind of built on grafted vines. Uh, you know, we're really fortunate that, again, some of the older Merlot vines that were planted on our site that we that we purchased were, uh, were own rooted. And so, you know, when we think about translating uh, vines into fruit and then into wine, you know, we have to acknowledge that um, th this, this straight impact of, um, of, of root to fruit from, from own rooted plants must have a tremendous amount of merit because we are tasting something in our Merlot that is very unique and unique to us only. You know, it is complemented by these really nice uh, dry, savory, uh, you know, dried fruit tannins, uh, there's always a really nice kind of, um, you know, toasted aroma, of course, it's part of our barrel program as well. Um, but yeah, licorice, there's some really interesting characteristics that come from our Merlot. We, we choose our best Merlot for talus naturally. Um, and best isn't always biggest. It's just kind of um, more in line with that profile. And uh, yeah, we, we love Merlot. My, my goodness, the, the Similcamine. You know, and that was part of the reason, um, the reason that we offered Merlot and Cap Franc, Syrah in the initial kind of base tasting pack option with you guys, because we really want people to recognize what uh, is that, what, what it is that Corselet does. And so when we think of these three varietals, we do think of like, hey, like this is it, like this is why we're here and, and this is what we're passionate about. Um, and this is what just does so damn well here. So, you know, we, we have to be receptive to that. Um, I'll maybe talk about the Cap Franc at the same time, Carl, um, which, you know, along the same similar philosophies is just another smoking heavy hitter. Cap Franc grows so well from a viticulture perspective. Uh, it just grows nice and straight and strong and has these very robust, again, sagey, savory characteristics. Um, damn, Cap Franc is good. <laughs> That's why. I have to tell you, Charlie, Mira is not a big fan of Cap Franc. And when I tasted it, I um, I just kind of hide the bottle from her and I swear and I give her a try. She's like, oh, my God, this is really good. I bet this is a Cap Franc, but I love this one. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So now she's giving True. I really me. did like it. And yeah, I absolutely. It. Yeah. There's yes. not. There's not been one wine from your winery that I haven't liked, and that's why we joined your wine club. So, <laughs> well, that's great, Mira. We don't want to make any wines that not everyone loves. I mean, what kind of winery would we be? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I already abused your time way too much. I'm, uh, I'm 50 minutes way past my uh, my deadline. <laughs> so sorry for taking you away from the family uh, for an extra 15 minutes, but thanks no, no, no. for being so generous of your time, Charlie. Really? Well, it's, it's a pleasure, guys. Again, I've really enjoyed uh, all the great work you guys have done and kind of put this all together. You've got a great system in place. So, so uh, you know, you've uh, you've had to do the hard part this time. I've, I've had the privilege of just kind of hopping online here and saying hello to you guys again, which I much enjoy. And, 
and uh, talk about the wines that I so much love to, to grow and make. So, um, yeah, this has been, been great, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, we'll be in touch. We'll be back very soon in your area. And uh, so we can go enjoy the, the member lounge soon and uh, <laughs> pick up a few extra bottles because I'm already out of Chardonnay here. So we'll have to go to the swing. Thank you, Charlie. You sound you, awesome. Jesse. And you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks, guys. You too. Cheers. Thanks, Amelia, my man. Thank you. Uh, we, I, can so do, I can do that for another two hours. Do you mind? Do you mind if we stay in? <laughs> All right, I'll go tell the kids they have like, like free time for the. No, can you tell the kids that they can cook dinner for us tonight? Can can they do that? No. I think it's a great way to teach skills. You know, like independent. Why not? Hey, why not? <laughs> you should explain. <laughs> Explain the boys that we have a big, bold red wine with dusty tannin so they can cook something appropriate for us, no? Right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Whoops. Uh, I just dropped something. Hey, we're ready to do our draw. Are you ready to do this, Carl? Absolutely. So we have here for? a uh, from the Mother's Butcher Market at, um, at uh, Mount Bushery. We have their peach, their Chardonnay and peach chipotle sauce, uh, barbecue sauce. And we have another one because I have to tell people here that it was one of my anniversary gifts. It's that Syrah salt. And, uh, so Not I that one. We got yeah, extra. Not, <laughs> no. Well, I said one of that. So see, no, no. This one is still, is still sealed. Look, there's the uh, good. Okay. <laughs> so we have this. So spin the wheel. Yay! Okay. Boom. We have Sandra, Sandra oh my our gosh. wine club partner. At, at Corsolet Winery. So, Sandra, this is yours. What did you say, our wine club partner? Oh, yes, because Sandra joined the wine club many years yeah, ago. Sandra yes. is a wine, is a wine, she's a, a wine club member at Corsolet. That's right. That's so fun. Oh, well, I'm excited to let Sandra know she's won these amazing things. And, yes, that salt is super cool. Like, we're finding... Yeah so many fun things that wineries make with the byproducts of the wine. Uh, there's the jellies, the jams, but the Syrah, that was pretty unique. So, or the Syrah salt, sorry. The Syrah salt. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for tuning in everyone. Oh, look, Sandra's still on. She says, thank you. <laughs> there yeah. you go. So before we go, I would just want to acknowledge a very good friend of mine, uh, someone who's been uh, a, a big help in my career, someone who believed in me for a very long time. He became a very close friend. He's a very well-known personality in the wine industry. His name is Glenn Fawcett. Glenn it was the uh, CEO and uh, majority partner at Black Hills for many, many years. Uh, he's been one of the face of the uh, BC wine industry for 25 years. And Glenn today just received a big honor. Is uh, Mira, I'm going to butcher it. Do you, uh, do you remember what I told you earlier? Oh, I'll have to Google it to get it right if you want. So here, Glenn. So it's from the BC wine. It's from the BC, the, big, the, BC group, the, uh, uh, the honor of the mansion. Uh, the, uh, so it, the reason why he got this award was for his innovation, his philanthropy, and how he gives back. And we've certainly experienced that because part of the reason we have Carl's Wine Club is because of Glenn Fawcett. I mean, he kind of gave us the idea of doing this last year. Um, he was involved with uh, Black Hills Winery for a super long time as an owner, as this, as the CEO and president. And um, yeah, so if we look at the actual name of the award, let's see. Yeah, it's it's the top award uh, for the Nine Growers of BC Award of Distinction, 
recognizes a winery representative for their outstanding leadership, commitment, and passion for the advancement of the BC wine industry. Previous winners of this prestigious award include luminaries such as Howard Soon, Sand Hill, Andrew Peller, Harry McWaters, Time Winery, and uh, Tony Stewart at Quailsgate. So congrats to Glenn. Congrats to Glenn. That cannot uh, that happen to a better person. I'm, like so generous of his time, so generous of his knowledge, and just a good guy all around and an absolute party animal. This guy know how to party, know how to throw parties. And uh, I really, really enjoy working with him, uh, doing a lot of stuff together. We did last week, we did the uh, the 2019 Nota Bene release party together, uh, where I was one of the special guests. So uh, always great to work with Glenn. And congratulations to you and your family, because you never get that award on your own. You're on your own. It's going to Kim, Kim's support and his family. So you guys are awesome. And congratulations to Glenn. So yeah. Wow. Monsieur Boucher? Madame Boucher, I think it's time for dinner and then go enjoy the Talis 2018. You bet. awarded 94 points from Carl's Wine Club. Amazing. How long should we get? Listen, so we will get more of these Talis ones, right? The 2018. How long should we keep this in our cellar, Carl? The 18? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's just starting to crawl. To me right now, it's three years old. Uh, at least another eight years. But now, okay. Away from you, it can be at least eight years of aging. But if you get your hand on it, like, like it's not going to make it for the past, the end of this year. So... Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, true. Maybe we should get a three pack of that and sit in, sit it down and. Yeah. I'm really see. into building our cellar because I think that 10, 20 years from now, we'll be kicking ourselves if we don't. Because other people will be tasting these wines saying, oh, we sell her the 2018 Talus. And it's 10 years old or 15 years old. And it's phenomenal. And we'll be like, oh, we drank it in 2021 so <laughs> we'll have to get a few at least okay all right well cheers right. Everyone. have a great thank evening you. thanks for stopping by it's been a blast thank you very much mira boucher you're the best i will see you on the other side and to everyone carl's wine club members canadian wine lovers all of you across the country we want to say thank you we want to see you next time and probably i don't know do we have a virtual tasting this weekend i always forget that schedule so i need to take a look at it but we will see you very soon thank you all cheers <laughs>